Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew, and welcome to this video all about mannequins. In this video, we're going to be discussing three things. The first one is do you need a mannequin? Then we're going to look at the uses of mannequins, and that might help you decide if you need a mannequin. And finally, we're going to be talking about the mannequins that I own or recommend, and the mannequins that I've owned in the past and perhaps don't recommend. So the term mannequin is really interchangeable with a dress form or a tailor's dummy. We're talking about mannequins that you would use for sewing or dressmaking, to help you with your sewing or dressmaking, or perhaps to help you if you're starting your own fashion brand or dressmaking pattern company. We're not going to be discussing mannequins that you find in the shops that are wearing garments. Often they won't be as proportionately accurate they can sometimes be a little bit elongated so that garments look good on them in the stores. So the first question that we're going to discuss is do you need a mannequin? And of course, this question is dictated by what you do. And I will, as we go through this class, discuss a different type of person because you might be a home sewer. You might be sewing stuff for yourself, maybe for your family, for friends. You might be a dressmaker. So maybe taking that home sewer step a little bit further in that you charge for what you do. Maybe you have customers that you make bespoke garments for. Or on the other extreme, you may be starting your own fashion range or dressmaking pattern range, in which case you want to be working with as standard or average figures as possible. So do you need a mannequin? For the general home sewer, my answer is no. You do not, if you don't have the budget, to be purchasing a mannequin. Perhaps if you've just started sewing or dressmaking, you do not need to be rushing to the stores and purchasing one. It can come later when you think, oh, that might actually be useful for me. And I'll talk through the uses of a mannequin in a minute. But really you can do all of the home sewing and dressmaking that your heart desires without a mannequin. If, however, this is more of a business thing, so you're wanting to start your own fashion range or something like that, then a mannequin can be more useful. It can be useful to help you design your patterns from, especially if the mannequin is a very standard or average size. It can be useful for you to test your patterns on as well to check the fit. So now you know that you don't 100% need a mannequin, let me explain to you why you might find a mannequin useful and the reasons why I use a mannequin in what I do. The first thing is that having a mannequin can just be something that you can put your garments on so that you can see how they look. And this might sound a little bit silly, but I promise it can sometimes help, especially as a home sewer. Sometimes you get to try the garment on yourself Sometimes that can be difficult when it's in sample stage and you just need to maybe even work out how to sew it or you just need to take a step back and think, do you like what you're making? This is where a mannequin can just be useful to actually put the garment on. It allows you to take a step back, look at your garment on something and think, oh, maybe that's the construction that I should be doing if that's what your query is or maybe oh, this doesn't look quite right. I'm not 100% happy with this. I'm going to change the design here. It just allows you to take a step back and look at somebody wearing your garment without judging yourself. Now, of course, this is made better if the mannequin is the same shape and size as you. And we'll talk about the options for that shortly. My second real use, and this is a reason why I use my mannequins a lot, is because I am drafting patterns and I need to check them on an average figure. So I could check my patterns on me and that would be okay. But I'm going to have the same discrepancies in my body as everybody else. We are all unique, we're all different. I want to be trying these garments on as close to standard or average as possible so that I can be taking a step back and thinking, yep, they look good or no, it doesn't look good, I need to change this. So that's something that's really important to me and would be important to somebody that was starting their own fashion range or perhaps dressmaking pattern company. This can also be useful if you are a dressmaker making garments for customers, especially if you have customers that you see a lot. Generally, I would have a mannequin that's padded up to their body shape and size that I would be able to fit garments on. And we'll talk about the padding up in a second. Another use is the hems of garments. 
it can be really useful to have your garment on a mannequin when you're doing the hem. It just can help work your way around the garment evenly. You can measure up from the floor to get the hem accurate. It can also be useful if you're working with a garment, a skirt or a dress that's cut on the bias. You can hang the garment on the mannequin and then hem it. And that is quite tricky to do on yourself, getting that hem nice and straight. Finally, another big use of a mannequin is if you want to get into draping your own patterns. Of course, you can learn to flat pattern cut, but some people prefer to drape their patterns. And of course, making a pattern often involves a little bit of both processes. So draping your patterns on mannequins is another way that you can create some nice fun designs. I also use my mannequins if I'm perhaps wanting to embellish something on a garment. Maybe I'm wanting to hand sew some lace over the bust area. Putting the garment on my mannequin to do that can be a little bit easier because it fills it out. It shapes the fabric. Of course, this is always fabric and garment dependent, but this can help having a mannequin to help you with that, a 3D form. So now we've talked about the main uses of mannequins. Let's move on to discuss what mannequins I recommend. Now I'm going to start this working from the cheapest to the most expensive. And we will be talking about personalizing those mannequins as well. So my top things that I look for in a mannequin are that the mannequin is ideally pinnable because I find that that is easier if I'm wanting to do some draping or if I'm wanting to sew some lace onto something, as I said, shaping it on the 3D body and fitting as well. I just find that it's a little bit more like a real person. The second thing for me is that my mannequin has a good weight to it. Whilst I'm working on it, I don't want it to be flimsy, wobbly, falling over, any of that. For me, I want my mannequin to have legs, but they can be tricky to find and they also can be more expensive. Again, that might be something that you move on to if you're a home sewer. Start with a mannequin that doesn't, move on to it in the future if you find you want that. And of course, one of the most important things for me is that my mannequins are as true to standard sizes as possible. And of course, here we could discuss, well, what is a standard size? As a brand or designer, I choose my standard size. Of course, that is correct. So you can choose yourself to be your standard size if you want to. But it's just something to think about. Who is your market? Who are you selling your garments to? All of that. So starting with our mannequins, let's begin with the cheapest. And one of my recommendations that I will often say if people ask me that they want a mannequin, firstly, why do you want a mannequin? Secondly, if you want a mannequin, then I would recommend really cheap mannequins that you can buy from Amazon. Now these are usually about 20 pounds, I think, 25 pounds, and they're made from polystyrene. They have a pullover little cover on them, and they are really cheap, they are flimsy, they don't have the same weight that other mannequins would have, but they are suitable for this use. And that is that I recommend people buy them to then pad them up to their individual measurements. So really, if you have a mannequin as a home sewer, I would recommend trying to make that mannequin similar to your individual measurements if you want to use it for fitting you're never going to be able to pad it up to be absolutely perfect. You won't be able to get the accuracy of having one shoulder lo lower, one shoulder higher, those kind of things, but at least you can get it as close as possible. Now, there are other ways that you can make a mannequin to be as similar to you as possible. One way is to use tape, and I've seen a few people doing this, taping their bodies and then having that as the mannequin. Of course, that is pretty accurate because you've taped around your body. The negative for me of this method is that it's pretty stiff and I like my mannequins to be soft, a little bit more squidgy and more like a real person, whereas a stiff form that you're trying garments on isn't going to be that realistic in my opinion. Of course, we will also talk about getting a bespoke mannequin made, but for starters, we're going to begin at our base price point, which is say 20 pounds, you get a cheap polystyrene mannequin and you build it up to be as close to your size as possible. The great thing about these is that you can pin in them. Yes, they are very flimsy, but you could put some weights or some sandbags or something on the bottom of it if you wanted to. And really for the cost, you can't go wrong. 
Moving up in the price, the next mannequins really are the adjustable mannequins. And I have had three of these during my life. The first one was the Blue Lady Venus, I think it was called, mannequin. And I had that when I was at college and university. And it did a job. It was a pretty standard size, so that was fine when I was at university. But there are some negatives to these. I then purchased the Lady Valet in both the small and the larger size. And for me, this is where I couldn't really use them, especially when I was starting to make garments that I would sell to customers. The negatives that I find with these is that firstly, they're not really pinnable. And that is a bit of a negative. They're really quite firm. The second thing is that the adjustable nature means that they're very difficult to actually get the proportions correct of a real person. Of course, it might be that your body, your individual body works, and that's fine. But for me, especially with the um, larger size, I would get customers coming in, and their neck and their shoulders would be smaller than my larger size mannequin. But the smaller size mannequin wouldn't go as large as they needed, and I just couldn't get the proportions right between the bust, bust waist, and the hip of the larger size mannequin. So this is where I think it can be difficult adjusting them to actually get what you need. So for me, I personally wouldn't recommend purchasing the adjustable mannequins. I think that there are other better options, which would be to pad up a mannequin. And whether you're using an adjustable mannequin for yourself or to work with clients, I really found that they didn't work for me. One positive of them is that they look lovely, especially the Lady Ballot. So if you wanted a display form in the corner of your room, then lovely. Um, but if you want it for actually a fitting purpose, I would recommend something else. The next mannequins that I'm going to recommend are the mannequins that you see here. Now, these are slightly more expensive and they are soft, pinnable mannequins. So they're great if you want to use them for draping or for embellishing things or sculpting and creating things on the mannequin. They come in a variety of different sizes and usually the companies will actually sell add-ons for arms, heads, and padding that you can add to give a little bit more shaping in perhaps the stomach area. Combined with doing some work yourself to pad up your form, you should be able to get something that closely resembles your individual figure. The brand that I can recommend is Royal Dress Forms. Now, my mannequin says classy forms on it, but I don't believe they exist anymore, and I think that they're part of the same company. Now, they're not quite as heavy on their bases as my really expensive mannequins, but of course that comes with a price. They have wheels so you can move them around, and I really like the sort of soft nature of their bodies. I also love the balance lines that you can see. This really helps if you are into draping. Another thing that really sets these mannequins apart from some of the cheaper ones is that they give you the start of legs. This means that you can fit trousers on the mannequin. Now, one thing to note here is that if you're planning on purchasing a mannequin that you're going to pad up, you of course want to buy something that's a similar size to you to start with. But you must remember that you cannot make that mannequin smaller. You can make it bigger, but you can't really make it smaller. So you're going to need to choose the mannequin based on your smallest measurement. And I would recommend that you check things like the shoulders and the neck. So check your shoulders and neck against the mannequins. And it might be that you need to buy a few sizes smaller to fit those areas of your body and then pad up the other areas. So that's just something that you need to consider when you're purchasing a mannequin to pad it up. Of course, moving on, if you wanted to purchase a mannequin that was designed to your individual shape and size, you can do that. There are a number of companies around nowadays that scan your body and produce a mannequin bespoke for you, which is an incredible service. I know that Beatrix Forms do them and I have a customer that has one and she is in love with this mannequin that is her looking back at her. Um, and I also know that I think Royal Forms or Classy Forms, one of the two companies were doing them at one point. Now, the positive of this is that you don't have to go through the padding up stage. You have got a mannequin that is you, which is great. The negative of this is that if you change size, 
you can't really go down in size. You can only put weight on. So if you're somebody that does yo-yo a little bit, goes up and down in weight, it might be better to be padding a mannequin where you can be adding, padding and removing it as you individually need. Of course, these mannequins also come at a bit of a higher price point, so it does depend on your budget. Now, let's move on to the mannequins that I use. So my little classy form over here is really the mannequin that I would use if I wanted to design something for me. I could pad her up to be my shape and size, and that would be my mannequin. The other mannequins that I have are by a brand called Alvanom, and they are designed as sort of industry standard or as standard as possible. The company works by scanning hundreds of thousands of women around the world, and then you can choose a mannequin that is based on the country, the size that you want, there is a huge range. I have three of these mannequins now. My smaller one is about a UK eight, and my fuller figure is about, I think she's a US 24, but it depends on the size where you buy your sizing, because I would say she's probably more like an 18, 20 compared to some of the shops that I see. As with everything, we all know you go into one shop and you're a size eight, the next shop you're a 14, the next shop you're a six. So it doesn't really matter what size they are, that's just a number, but it matters that I've been able to get one in a smaller size and one in a fuller figure. So these are what I use for my pattern range. Now, these mannequins have long arms, they have legs. They have a really nice heavy base where I can lock the wheels. So they are pretty heavy to work on, but that's what I want. I want something that's really structural and that isn't gonna shift and move as I'm playing with it. One of the things I love about these mannequins is that two of the three that I have are what are called soft forms. So they are squidgy and you can easily pin into them. I love that they feel a little bit more like fitting a real person rather than the other form that I have is a hard form. It's more of a standard mannequin sort of made from fiberglass. If I want to dress my firmer mannequin, I need to push in her shoulders to put tops on her, and I would push in her hips to put trousers on her. With my soft forms, they don't have that technology, but because they are soft and squidgy, you can get the garments on. Of course, these mannequins are more expensive. They're designed for businesses and the fashion industry. If you are starting your own fashion range or dressmaking pattern range, they could be a fantastic thing to own. Or perhaps if you're a dressmaker and you wanted to have a few in a variety of different sizes that you could pad up for different customers. For home sewers, it might be overkill, but it depends on your budget. You could purchase one as a very premium mannequin to have in a size that's close to yours. And of course you could pad that up to fit your measurements. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this class and that you understand a little bit more about whether you need a mannequin and why you might use one, as well as some of the options for purchasing one. One final question that I had on Instagram was regarding what if you were pregnant and you needed to make your mannequin have a pregnancy bump? You can actually purchase little bumps that you could get to attach to your mannequin for helping you to fit things during the time that you are pregnant. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this class. Thanks for watching and see you soon.